Okay, everybody, uh, this is Day of Decision. We are on our way to San Francisco as we speak. We're coming over the hill into Petaluma. <clears throat> Both of us were nervous. Hello, Jay. Hey, Dad. How are you doing today? Uh, I think I'm getting an ulcer. My stomach is really tight. I feel really stressed out. Uh, I think I yelled at you twice this morning. Oh, yes, you did. You know, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. We gotta go, we gotta go. I just heard that there's an accident in Marin. So hopefully that's not going to back us up too long. It's 7.30 in the morning and, and the ruling comes out at 10 o'clock. And it's really important that we're there this morning because, uh, you know, if, if they're going to basically ban our marriage, we want to hear it. You know, we want to be there for that event. We want to know that we did everything we possibly could. We want them to look us in the eye and tell us why they're doing it. I agree. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we don't have too many Christians yell at us, you know, and, and <laughs> people screaming and yelling, and, and hopefully they'll be mellow and... You know, if it is against us that people come together and, and we, we protest and we let the world know that we're not just going to sit back and, and be treated as second-class second citizens. It's pretty much, you know. Well, we also have two very important guest stars today who cannot be forgotten. There's Selena. Say, wave hello, Selena. Say good morning. Huh? And there is Daniel. Hi. Hi, how are you guys doing today? Good. Yeah? Do you guys think you're going to be able to put up with two crazy dads today? No. No. No? Yep. It's going to be a really strange day full of really strange people and lots of weird grown-up stuff. So, Daniel, do you know where we're going? San Francisco. For what? To decide if gay marriage is legal or illegal in the country, in the state of California. What do you what do you think about that? Okay, how do you feel about it? How do you think if, if they if they ban our marriage, how would that affect you? Will it affect you at all? It won't affect me. I don't know. Won't affect you personally? I don't know. Okay. How do you think it's gonna affect our family? Think it's gonna change our family at all? I don't know. Huh? No. I don't think it'll change our family either. <clears throat> it won't change the way we live every day. Because I decided a long time ago when I married you that whether it was legal or not, it was real in my heart and that's what mattered the most. So, neither one of us slept last night. <laughs> we're still nervous today and we're a little bit crazy. So the next time you hear from us, hopefully we'll be on the steps of City Hall.
Hi, YouTube. So will you, parents, friends, and witnesses, also agree to lovingly support this union? If so, please say, I will. I will. That's good. We had a mutual friend named Jamie, and he was a good friend of both of ours. I met Brian at breakfast one morning. We were all having breakfast together at a local restaurant, and we realized we had a common interest, which is Star Wars. You gotta show him the Star Wars office, Brian. Yeah. yeah. It's all dusty. Yeah, I don't... Cat bathroom, no going there. Can you get the light switch, please? Huge Star Wars fans. And everybody wonders if we let the kids play in here. And no. <laughs> <laughs> we are so different people. I mean, very different in every aspect of life. The one thing we have majorly in common is Star Wars. Because I'm like a completely outdoors person. I like to camp and fish, and he's such a computer, you know, nerd. He likes computer games and music, and we're just completely opposites. We just became good friends. I mean, we became friends. We were probably friends for about two years. And there had been a few situations where we had done things together that, you know, I realized that there's something special about this guy. I remember the, the first time that I ever had any type of feelings towards Brian was uh, we went and saw a movie. What was the name of the movie? Love, Valor, and Compassion. Love, Valor, and Compassion. It was a very sad movie, and he actually cried openly in the theater, which is something he's embarrassed by, but it's something I would never do. I'm just not the type of person to put my feelings in, you know, into that, out there like that. So he was really embarrassed the fact that he cried, but I was really moved by that. So I think it, that was the first time I ever looked at Brian as being special. I was very impressed by him because he had a lot of inner strength and uh, he was a very well-grounded person who had really put himself together in life. Uh, there was one time when we had taken a trip out to the beach because we just had nothing to do and it was a beautiful day and we drove out and there's a little spot out by Go Rock where you can park and walk out onto a little hill and we were both just sitting there looking out over the ocean and we both turned around and looked at each other and kissed for the very first time. And it was like, literally felt like being struck by lightning. And I knew in that moment that Jay was the person that I was going to be with. it. There was no going back. It's been a great 13 years, so I think we've been very fortunate. 13? 13. From San Diego to San Francisco, there's been a huge surge of same-sex couples getting licenses to wed and exchanging their vows. Same-sex marriage is now legal in California. It's being called the new summer of love in California. Now, this means California today became the second state in the union to legalize same-sex marriage. We're back with Senator John McCain, and uh, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Uh, <laughs> I legally now can get married, like everyone should. It's about human dignity. It's about civil rights. It's about time. But what's the impact of this, and will this ruling stick? There's concern in the gay community. A proposal that would amend the state constitution and ban gay marriage is on the November ballot. Opposition groups say they've gathered more than one million signatures to get a measure on the November ballot that would wipe out today's decision by changing the state constitution to say that marriage can exist only between men and women. Marriage has always been about men and women coming together, having children, and raising them in the context of a legally recognized marriage. I will tell Americans straight up that I don't support uh, defining marriage as anything but between one man and one woman and I think through nuances we could go round and round about what that actually means. Let's try to avoid nuance, Senator. Do you support gay marriage? 
No, Barack Obama nor I support redefining from a, a, from a civil side what constitutes marriage. We do not support that. I don't think um, marriage, that the government actually has anything to do with but that they do have religious rights. I know, but they do have some to do because gay marriage is going to be a reality in this country in 10 years. Why do they have anything to do with it? Because they choose to, and you're not going to stop them. All right. Well, so. see, that's see, that's this the Supreme Court may rule This is against. where we disagree. Uh, I just believe in the unique status of marriage between man and woman. It's this old way of thinking that we are not all the same. We are all the same people, all of us. No, you're no different than I am. Our love is the same. When we actually did get married, we wanted to make sure, you know, we had a big wedding. Yeah. And like, you know, the traditional weddings that everybody gets to have. And I mean, we, I really wanted that. So where all of our friends and family would be there. I didn't just want to go down to City Hall and get married. But if we were going to put the type of expense into that, we wanted to make sure that it was a legitimate, you know, wedding. So when the Supreme Court ruled that gay marriage should be legal, you know, we started planning the next day. And it was just automatic. We started putting the wedding together. Hey, Anna, when were you married? October 25th? 26th. 26th. So will you, parents, friends, and witnesses, also agree to lovingly support this union? If so, please say, I will. I will. That's good. Scripture, it is written, love is patient, love is kind. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in what is right. So love bears all things, believes all things, and endures all things. So there is hope in faith and love, this thing, but often the greatest is love. take you, Brian, to be my married partner, to love and to cherish throughout life's journey, from this day forward, I pledge you my love. Just letting people do their own thing that doesn't that won't affect us this is gonna have a huge effect on society first of all I think religious freedoms are at stake here I think people's ability to believe in marriage as a divine institution of God and to preach that incorporate that belief into their everyday lives is very much at risk marriage isn't a private act it's a public status and when the your government tells you that same-sex unions are marriages it's going to affect a lot of people I don't want my children to grow up in a genderless society. The rights of children are at risk. Children have the right to be raised by a mother and father. Concern that rights would be infringed, particularly if you disagreed with gay marriage. But I, I do believe that marriage is for one man and one woman for life, that, that that's the way that it works best, and that none of us really have any authority to start redefining that kind of thing.
had a very, very strong campaign at the pro Proposition 8 people. Our hands are tied here, Terry. I became a teacher to mold the child, not mess him up. You preach into the choir. Joan, kids don't get divorce, let alone gay attraction. I hear you. The definition of marriage doesn't need to be changed. Mom, guess what I learned in school today? What, sweetie? I learned how a prince married a prince, and I can marry a princess. Think it can happen? It's already happened. Where they will teach about homosexuality and gay marriage in every topic, in math, in reading, in social studies, in spelling, there will be terms and concepts of homosexuality promoted at, in every subject, at every level. It's no longer about tolerance. Acceptance of gay marriage is now mandatory. That changes a lot of things. People sued over personal beliefs. Churches could lose their tax exemption. Gay marriage taught in public schools. I believe this case is actually about going into churches and going in and attacking churches and saying, you can't teach anything else. Did you know that churches that rent out their facilities for marriages could be forced to allow same-sex marriage ceremonies on their property? I'm part of a New Jersey church group punished by the government because we can't support same-sex marriage. I am a Massachusetts parent helplessly watching public schools teach my son that gay marriage is okay. What they're essentially implying in this campaign is that somehow other people are becoming the victims. And the fact of the matter is that not one thing that they say in this ad is true. The California State Supreme Court in the gay marriage decision actually wrote no religion will be required to change its religious policies or practices with regard to same-sex couples. I mean, I, I'm okay with saying, hey, this is what you believe, and that's fine. You believe that. I mean, I understand. I accept that. That's who you are as a person. But when you are willing to lie to win the battle, like when they were making you know, statements like, you know, now preachers are going to have to marry gay people, that's a blatant lie. People feel like they need to protect their churches. They feel like they need to protect their communities. And I think they felt like gay people were attacking their relationships, their churches, and it wasn't about them. It has nothing to do with them. It has to do with us, you know, our own protections. It has nothing to do with people who might feel like we're attacking them because we were being attacked. They're not being attacked, you know? So when people are saying, why do I have to accept gay marriage? You don't. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to like it. You don't have to like us. You know, so that's the most frustrating part is when people want to say that we're attacking their traditions. That's frustrating because there are traditions too. Daddy, Megan says you have to have a mommy and a daddy to have a baby. Maybe we should spend a little less time over at Megan's house. What Megan means is that it takes a man and a woman to make a baby, that's all. She said that mommies and daddies have to get married first. No, sweetheart, you don't have to be married to have a baby. Then... What's marriage for? Let's not confuse our kids. Protect marriage by protecting the real meaning of marriage. Only between a man and a woman. Vote yes on Proposition 8. But during the whole Prop 8 thing, it was like, I mean, all you saw was negative stuff. Yeah. You know, and you didn't see any gay families. Even our side wasn't showing gay families. They were just showing straight people talking about how we shouldn't discriminate against gay people. And it just got, it frustrated us. Rolling. Hi, my name is Jay Foxley, and I've been hearing a lot lately about how uh, the passage of Prop 8 is supposed to protect families and family values. <coughs> I'm a gay male who's been with my partner for 13 years, and we have two wonderful kids. We spend every night at the dinner table having dinner um, with my family, and I was just hoping that people could see that, you know, the straight families aren't the only ones with family values, that the people in California, gay people who get married, value our, our marriages, our relationships, and our families. This is my handsome husband, Brian. Been together for 13 years, the love of my life. This is our family table where we have dinner every night. We enjoy our family. We, we have family dinner every night. Um, we are a gay family, you know. Our kids aren't gay, but we are. Um, marriage is really important to us. It's about our family and, you know, having this, the safety and security that we will have with marriage. Um, and I hope that straight people who are, you know, listening to the whole family value stuff will, will realize that families come in all shapes and sizes. Um, straight, gay, and they're all loving.
Um, and that's what marriage is about. It's about loving and family. And I hope people understand that our family is just as important as anybody else's family. Can you say, can you say bye-bye? Bye. Say bye, Selena. Bye-bye. Uh, okay. In California today, voters will decide an issue that has divided many people across the country. CBS News correspondent John Blackstone is in San Francisco with more on Proposition A. Good morning, John. Well, good morning, Harry. As you know, there's not much suspense in this very blue state, how this very blue state will vote in the presidential race. The big battle here, and a battle that's too close to call, is over the future of same-sex marriage. Close it now. Same-sex couples have been getting legally married in California for almost five months since the state Supreme Court opened the way. against the ban except for Solano County which voted for it. Los Angeles County a close race but they passed Proposition 8 by a slim margin here. San Diego County also passing. After five months and some 18,000 same-sex marriages in California the state's voters have said no more. The battle tonight has been won. Never before has our Constitution been used to strip rights away. and poor, Democrat and Republican, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, gay, straight, disabled and not disabled, Americans who sent a message to the world that we have never been just a collection of individuals or a collection of red states and blue states. We are and always will be the United States of America. I remember um, laying in bed, remember, and we were watching Obama's inaugural speech with the flag flying in the background yeah. and him talking about how it was an unprecedented day of freedom, and, and we were sitting there mourning the fact that Prop 8 had passed, literally, and we're thinking, freedom for who? I think we might have a video of that. I think we did make one the day after. Hello, California. First of all, I want to I wanna thank everybody for electing Obama for president. We were very happy to see that last night. Um, this is the second video I've done since our dinner at the table about family values and no on Prop 8. Um, I've been pretty much bursting into tears at random times all morning. And this is kind of my last way of getting it out and letting people know how I feel. Um, I want to thank everybody who worked really hard to help try to defeat Prop 8. Um, as much as people think that domestic partnerships is the same as marriage, it's not. Our family will continue to be a family. I continue to be a father. I continue to be a partner. I continue to, to want to fight and protect for everybody's equal rights in this country. I just want to thank everybody who has put the time and energy into helping my family. I've been inspired by a lot of good people working really hard for all of our rights. Um, so thank you, you too.
Okay, my name is Anne Lefew, and I am Brian Lefew's grandmother, the love of my life. My name is Julio Ligues. No, <laughs> my name is Chuck, I'm Brian's dad, and uh, I'm here hoping I don't disappoint him. <laughs> so here we go. I am Brendan Lefew, Brian's younger brother. I used to tell him as a little kid, I love you and I'll love you if you have two heads and ten arms. I will love you always. It, it, it wasn't easy between him and I at first because I'm, st I'm a tradi traditionalist, you know, a, a man, woman. But then, too, I saw the love that they had. I try to tell them that we're all God's children, and that's how I feel about it. We're all God's children, and I accept them, like I said, if they treat me well and if they flaunt anything, then I'm not, I'm not acceptable to that. I mean, just be respectful. Love each other. And more important, they have to be happy with each other. No matter what I feel, they have to be happy with each other. Yeah. When you see their family, um, you can see that it is a very loving, and very functional family, much more so than many of the street families that I've seen in my life. But I don't uh, agree with hardly any of it. But then too, I really don't care. Because there's so many issues, to me, much more important, you know, because to me, I don't even care if I'm married. I am. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I'm with someone I care about. I mean, you could take that marriage certificate away. You're not making me go away from that woman. You know? She's just in my heart. And I'm sure that's the way they are. That's why, you know, you're pressing on something that probably people, a lot of people just don't like. Marriage means something different to everybody, you know, mm -hmm. to a 12-year-old girl who's been growing up dreaming about it her whole life. Could be her world. Mm -hmm. To my dad, who was divorced at a young age in a horrible, bloody divorce that destroyed all of our lives, and then remarried later on, it, it means something completely different to him, too. Marriage to me is just, uh, I don't know why you want to say, I'm married, hello, you know, big deal, you know? To me, it's a little different, I, I don't know. It's not that important. I consider myself, um, I'll stand up for certain things, but it has, I don't know. Um, I defend, I would defend the right of anyone to have that right. I don't think we have a right to anything, to be honest with you. We're, we've got so many rights, we're losing our freedom. Okay? It's craziness, but that's what it is. We've got all the technology, but it still takes us an hour to go across town. I mean, everything's starting to turn backwards because we want so many rights. Sometimes we're finding stuff that's not even there. So, mm -hmm. But you won't go march or? Well, I've never been asked to. I have been involved in the, uh, when they put gasoline, uh, the additive in the gas and uh, went over and protested against it. But uh, I pick my missions. They were applying stricter emissions to cars. They went to Sacramento and they protested right. that because they were afraid that the government was trying to take away everybody's car. Um, so yeah, they have been activists in the past. I'm not to that point yet of activism. Um, if I felt that Brian needed my help and wanted my help, I would offer it to him. Um, but it'd be because of him. It wouldn't be because of this issue was so near and dear to my heart. It would be to help my brother. Mm. Nobody's mistreating you, Brian. You're loved all the time, Grandma and me. But you want what you want, well then, there's a price and it's gonna be a hard one if you really want it. And I told him before, hey, I'll stand with you. I don't agree but I'm sure not gonna let anybody hurt you, okay? Well, we had to have a few arguments around the table as a family mm -hmm. to come to the place where we are now. But then, yeah, yeah, so it wasn't just accept, you know, it's like even the whole Prop 8 thing, it was, we talked about it, they were very much gonna vote for it. 
you know, and then that's we got kind of angry about that. And he actually got into his, uh, an argument and a fight with his dad about Which it. I don't. I don't. I don't argue yeah. with him or fight with him about anything. This Never. is the only issue that's brought up enough anger that I've been willing to yeah. stand up to them about it. But did you vote for Proposition Eight? Which way, if you vote yes, what was that for? That was... Yes, was banning same-sex marriage. No, I actually voted for Brian. Only because I knew it would fail. And I wanted to show my support for it because of him. Because I loved him so much. And Jay, too. How did you vote for Proposition E? Don't tell my son, but I voted yes. For Proposition E. In support of Proposition E? Mm-hmm. I believe... Because of Brian and Jay, I think they're entitled to certain things. I, I believe that. So, um, well, you actually voted uh, no so that Proposition proposition 8 wouldn't be passed so that it will allow same-sex marriage marriages to continue. Voted no? Uh, proposition 8 was to ban uh, same-sex marriage. And you had to vote? No, in order to uh, allow it to continue. So did you... Uh, I voted for it, okay. whatever it was. Okay. I voted for it. So banning same-sex marriage? Happy it was to ban same-sex marriage? No, I didn't want... I, I voted for it. Not to. Not okay. to ban it. Okay, yeah. I mean, I remember when we were making our anti-Prop 8 videos, it would get confusing in the language because you would want to say like you're you're voting for gay marriage but it was actually the opposite so i understand how some people would be confused by that i actually did vote for proposition eight um and i had a brief conversation with brian about it before i voted and i do regret my decision to vote for it oh so he voted for it oh interesting <laughs> no i didn't know that no yeah he never he never told us that they they had told us that they voted against it for us you don't have to be married to be equal, okay? And I, I think it's just a deal to where, okay, I mean, if this is what you think that you need to have people like you, then, or, or make you acceptable to society, then you're barking up the wrong tree. You, I mean, I, I said before, if you want what you want, you're gonna have to show like, you're, like everybody you're else, all right, you love, you have dogs, you have children. If this is what you want, then a lot of this uh, militant point of view has to go because you're scaring the heck out of people. You really are. And your end of it's gonna have to get a handle over here because you're never gonna get what you get. Okay, you're, it's never gonna happen if that happens. Okay, so whether I believe in equality in mar marriage, not really because I don't even feel like you have a right to be married male or female or male on male. It's just something, I don't know. To me, it's just not a right, it just happens, you know? I don't know what to say. So, they're people just like everyone else. They have a family just like everyone else. And there's nothing really exceptional about what they're doing other than the controversy that's taking place surrounding it. It's my pleasure to welcome you tonight to the Family Equality Council. Jay and Brian left you along with their children, Daniel and Selena, who are a private family living in Northern California when Proposition 8 passed on November 8, 2008. In response, the left used combat the lies and stereotypes surrounding the LGBT community by giving the outside world a look into the life of an average LGBT family. Please turn your attention to the screens around the room for a small look at what they've done. 2009 Equality Circle Award recipients, the Lefew family. Hi YouTube. Hi YouTube. Hi YouTube. Hi YouTube. Hey YouTube. Go. Hi YouTube. Hey YouTube. Hello YouTube. So uh, this is my family. This is my husband Brian. This Hi. is my son Daniel. Hi. This is my daughter Selena. Back when Prop 8 was going on here in California, we thought it was very important that people got to see what, what it is for two gay men to raise children and to show basically how normal and boring our family is. Daniel's first shaving okay. lesson. They had no baby chick to feed and cuddle and love. Their nest was nice, but it was a little empty. It's kind of like me and Daddy Brian, huh? 
Daniel and, and Selena are biological brother and sister. And, you know, she just has always only known two dads. And we were very frustrated by the campaign here. They refuse to show gay families in our natural settings. Um, like every other family, we have normal routines. We have dinner every night together. We say our good night prayers. We go to church. Um, we are a family. You know, we have lots of struggles with paying bills and, and living our day-to-day -day lives. All we are asking for is uh, equal protection under the, the laws which are guaranteed us under the Constitution. Again, the th strongest thing you can do is just be like everybody. The vacation videos were great, okay? Because it says, I go on vacation too. It says, I'm like everybody else. Okay, that those those kind of things. But like I say, this is thousands of years old problems. You think a few videos in this time is going to change anything? Not really. Truthfully, I would hope everyone would turn around and come back to God. That was what our, co our country was founded on. And uh, I'm hoping that everybody can, what is it, Rodney King said, get along? You know, let everyone live their own lives as long as they don't cross barriers. Now, they say, okay, but I don't believe in God. I'm a secularist, and you can't make laws in the United States based upon what God says and then how we answer. Well, we can make laws in our country based on what the majority of people say, and the majority of people in our country say that marriage is, is worth fighting for, and they did, and uh, the definition of it stays. And to me, it wasn't the gay marriage issue. It was overturning something that got voted, see? And to me, it could be any issue. I don't care what that issue is. It could be gun rights, it could be whatever. If you vote, things get overturned, what good is it in voting? But we're, we're registered for the, the privilege of voting. That's one of the core civil rights. And seven out of 10 Americans in 30 states have said this is the definition of marriage, corresponding with 5,000 years of history. 
it's very difficult for your side to lose. It's hard for all of us to lose. It's all harmless. But, but the fact you is you've actually lost in a bona fide election. Over 7 million voters in California chose to restore the definition of marriage in California, what it has been from the very beginning, as one man and one woman. They believe that that's the best uh, environment for children, and their collective voices are constitutional and should be upheld and not overturned by a single judge. What it is is 31 states have downed this. So how in my little world going to happen? Because it's going to go down. It's just the way it is. It's just, it's tradition. In general, when you ask for a majority rules vote on minority rights, you get results like what we've seen on the gay marriage issue. 31 out of 31 times in 31 out of 31 states, voters voted it down. But here's the thing about rights. They're not actually supposed to be voted on. That's why they're called rights. It should have never been on the ballot. I don't think that the court should have allowed it to go be voted on. How do you vote on people's rights? I began to understand that it really was a, an issue about rights. It wasn't about state procedures or, or um, small print in the Constitution. It was about two people's ability to have the same rights as the rest of the citizens of the state. Mm -hmm. The battle for same-sex marriage continues. <laughs> and one of the movement's mottos is gay is the new black. And, and some people don't agree with uh, comparing this to black suffrage. You know, they didn't want to die for being black. They didn't want to be lynched. They wanted to be able to walk through the front door. They wanted, you know, you had Jim Crow laws that said you could only, you could not do certain things if you were black. All my African-American friends, all of them to the person are profoundly offended when they try to equate this with the civil rights movement. That is not the same as an individual who has a choice regarding a bedroom preferential arrangement. The idea that Americans are like racists for believing marriage is the union of husband and wife is absurd and outrageous. It's a slur against the good will of the American people. Absolutely. Civil rights is a black issue. Now everybody in America wants to be black. The feminists. No, everybody in America gays, wants civil rights. Illegal immigrants. <laughs> yeah, but is, you can't. Everybody in America wants civil rights. Why they want to be civil black. Right, they want civil are rights. Being if denied. Well, and if civil rights is an issue that involves all of us, we all want our civil rights. Right. Why should gay people be any less? They do have civil rights. They no one marry. can marry. Oh, yes, they can. They can't marry someone of the same sex. Neither can you. Neither can so you. Say, neither can you're I. You're saying gay people can, can get married as long as, they, as long as they're not gay anymore, essentially, as long as they don't function as gay no, people. I mean, come that's, on, that's absurd. Don't say this is equal rights. This yeah, is. You should have a right to marry whoever you want. That's the point. I do want to point out that yeah. both these movements began at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, which, which two? The civil rights movement mm -hmm. and the gay rights movement. Any time that you as an American citizen have to go out and demand rights that you as an American citizen should have because you're born an American, forget about what your sexual preference is, but just as an American citizen, the right to teach if you want to teach in a school, the right to uh, go and adopt children, all of these rights that you have as American citizens. You know, they lynched and hung and dragged and killed a lot of gay folks. Now, is it the same amount of black folks? No, but you know, they're Americans through and through. It is important that we are all treated equally under the law, because if we're not, then it leaves the door open for everybody else to endure the same treatment that gay couples are going to go through. And I don't think people really realize that, you know, that if it, they're okay with us being second class citizens, who will be the next people behind us? You know, there are a lot of people out there who don't want to stop at same sex marriage. You know, that it will be, and I think there are a lot of people out there that don't think this is very realistic, but there are a lot of people out there who really do want to see gay people criminalized, you know, and back in the closets and back in mental institutions and treated as if we're a sickness on society. And we can't, we can't go back. You know, you can't keep going back. We have to move forward. And, and marriage equality is one step on that. You know, there are a lot of other steps to take, but this is one really important one. We voted. We went into the we went into the booth, voted Barack Obama and Prop 8. So there were things that people felt when they walked into that booth, and that happened to be the majority. So uh, these protests are, in essence, protesting what the majority want. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. 
nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. The people vote, and the people for the third time have said yes. We believe marriage is between a man and a woman, and whether or not people like that or not, that's what the people want. California Supreme Court already said we were a protected class. They already said we were protected. So why would you allow, I mean, would they allow a law to be passed against African Americans or Latinos or women that are protected classes of people? No, they wouldn't allow it. They would not allow a law to be passed like that. No state shall deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws, even if lots of people in that state want to. When I vote for something, I expect that that law is going to remain on the books until the people say, N you know, never mind. It's not up for a vote. Rights are part of the deal if you're an American. That's why the Equal Protection Clause is in the Constitution. Would you say, though, if the laws were oppressive as they were against black Americans in, uh, you know, before the 60s, that the courts have a right to overturn the will of the people if the courts believe that the laws are oppressing homosexuals? Well, uh Again, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, your best go-to guy for political uh, issues like this. For me, uh, marriage is, is a, it's a theological issue, it's a moral issue, it's a family issue. And um, marriage is what it is, and we understand what it is. And we, when we start playing with that, there's going to be serious consequences for it. I don't see any God that would have a problem with what I have with Brian. I mean, me and Brian love each other. We're committed to each other. You know, I mean, I, you know, I know exactly he... My, there's nothing false about my love for him. It's hard sometimes for me to erase some of the things that I was taught when I was a kid. And because there's all the, the voices of like Oral Roberts and people like them in the back of your head telling you, you know, you, you're an abomination. <laughs> you have no right to exist. Um, but I know the love that I feel for my partner is real, no matter what happens in our life. And I believe in my heart that that's never wrong. I know I was born gay, so why would a God make me that way to make me not want to love the way I love Brian? It doesn't make any sense. So I think people who, who question the fact that, you know, God would somehow bless our relationships, they just, they don't know, they don't know God. There's nothing in the scriptures that even come close to condemning a loving gay relationship. In fact, actually, the term homosexual didn't even exist in the Greek lexicon. The term didn't appear in the translations of scriptures until 1946 in the New Revised Standard translation of the New Testament. If you look at scripture and you find that word homosexual or homosexuality, that is a clear betrayal of the text. That word simply did not exist, which says a lot if we really say this is the word of God, we want to be faithful. It's a word that was coined in about the 19th century, um, 1920, early 20th, that's formed with a Greek word homo, meaning same, and sexualis, a Latin term. Those two terms from totally different languages are smushed together to come up with this meaning that we now use today, homosexual, homosexuality. Scripture talks a lot about sexual acts, both um, same sex and opposite sex. So any real study of the scriptures needs to focus on what are these acts that they are talking about, not the orientation of the people. I mean, if you even go back to the story of Sodom, that's not a story of loving gay relationship. That's a story of townspeople trying to rape angels, essentially a gangbang of this angel that God sent to the town. Not a loving gay relationship. You shall not lie with a man as with a woman, for that is an abomination. In that culture, in that time, for a man to lie with a man as with a woman, women were subjugated, women were property. 
the context in which a man would have lied with another man in that way, denigrating the image of man, who was considered the image of God. And continually, time and time again, if you look at any of these passages that are used to condemn homosexuality, per se, they're really looking at abusive forms of same-sex sex. I read the Bible and I read the Ten Commandments and it doesn't say anything about who you're with or anything. Those Ten Commandments are supposed to get you into heaven. So that's how I, you know, that's how I feel. Other people have to deal with their own own angers. I think sometimes um, they become too involved and it becomes a cancer to their soul. It eats you up because of your hatred of certain things. And I don't want that in my life because I don't think God should wants it for us. Maggie Gallagher is the president of the National Organization for Marriage, and Joe Solomnees is the president of the Human Rights Campaign. Explain to me how they want to change the way I live. Well, marriage isn't a private act, it's a public status. And when the, your government tells you that same-sex unions are marriages, it's going to affect a lot of people besides the couple who wants to do it. I've been following the National Organization for Marriage and the blogs because wherever something anti-gay is happening, Maggie Gallagher pops up and she's got something to say about it. Maggie Gallagher, the National Organization for Marriage. The case for gay marriage is ultimately rooted in a rejection of, of common sense, and core ideas about the natural but family, that including the children of, need, including the that, idea okay, that children need a mother and father. The Mormons hooked up with Catholics, and they started the National Organization for Marriage, and and that National Organ Organization for Marriage is trying to get people who are not necessarily so religiously inclined. They're trying to get people who are in the middle as well. They're there every time something's going on against marriage equality, against don't ask, don't tell, against employment discrimination laws. You know, it's, it's like watching the monster be born. <laughs> I actually don't believe the future belongs to same-sex marriage. I think civilizations that lose the idea as basic as to make a marriage, you need a husband and wife, or try to put in their founding documents the idea that children need a mom and dad is now bigotry, are going to be in trouble, and I want to protect America from that trouble down the road. The same playbook in every state. You know, kids are going to be taught gay marriage in schools. Public schools, when they teach about marriage, are going to teach that, that your views, uh, they're going to teach your children and grandchildren that your views of marriage are discarded relics of ancient bigotry. That churches will be forced to perform same-sex marriages. And uh, professionals from faith traditions that just don't recognize same-sex unions as marriages and organizations are going to find that their liberties are curtailed. Religious freedoms will be limited and, and they won't be able to speak out against gay people. The heart of the gay marriage idea is that there is no difference between a same-sex union and a union of husband and wife, and that you're a bigot engaging in discrimination if you think otherwise. All of that stuff, which is inaccurate, completely untrue and never ever happened in states that did allow marriage equality you know but they get people scared and when you're coming from that place of fear it really doesn't matter what the facts are you know you're just coming from that place of fear marriage is the only institution we have that's about bringing together the two great halves of humanity male and female so that children can know and be known by and love and be loved by their own mother and father it's the consensus around the idea that you got to bring together the two great halves of humanity male and female to make and raise the next generation marriage is about bringing together the two great halves of humanity male and female in part so that children can know and be known by and love and be known by their own mother and father. But the institution of marriage itself is not about the adults. No matter how much they love each other, it's about the children. Okay. You know, they did it in Hawaii, they did it in California, they did it in Maine. But the playbook works every time, you know? And, and I think that's why people need to we need to bring transparency to the whole thing so that when the playbook comes out again, people can see, oh, they're going from A to B to C, just like they did over here.
It's not discrimination to treat different things differently. It is not discrimination to treat different things differently. Marriage is a union of husband and wife because these are the unions that make new life and connect children in love to their mother and father. But the judge pointed out that there's many marriages that aren't uh, for, for procreation and, and that in fact the Supreme Court has numerous times said that marriage is about much more than that. I'm convinced from my studies that marriage is more than just procreative. If it were just having babies, we wouldn't be marrying older people. We wouldn't be marrying infertile couples. But the fact that the church has historically, for hundreds of years, if not the entire span, married people in these circumstances, I think that points towards another function of marriage beyond the procreative, and it's that of the unitive of those two souls becoming one in that way that Christ speaks about. I think there is a special place for gay couples in the kingdom of God, in the sense that every culture, every race, has children whose parents die, children who are abandoned, children who for some reason or another are alone. Every culture, every race, every continent. Perhaps that is a unique space that gay people have been created to fill, to be parents of those who are parentless. And I think in that way, it is procreative, it is continuing their life, providing them that support, offering a structure in which kids can be raised with parents who love them. So in many ways, I think a gay relationship can fulfill the procreative in raising up life as well as that unitive of two souls uniting to each other in a unique way. Today is a very special day. Can you tell me what happened today? Selena lost her first baby tooth. Her very first tooth. And she cried. She was kind of scared by it. And tonight you're playing what role? Yep, it's time for the tooth fairy to make a visit. And we don't want to say it too loud because we don't want to wake you up. You're the best fairy in the land. <sighs> We're going to kick you right in the nuts. <laughs> Okay, Tooth Fairy, let's see what you gotta do. Quiet. Okay, I'll be quiet. And by the way, Daniel has one too. So what, we've been having some weird problems with teeth around here. What's going on? The kids are getting old. They're losing their teeth. No, but you've been losing the teeth. Well, oh, no. Yeah. So the last couple of teeth? Had, no, we only had one tooth go missing because I think the cats took it. So you left it laying around and the cats picked it up? I left it on the counter and the cats got it, yeah. And how did you explain this to Daniel? Uh, I told him the cats took it, <laughs> which is probably what happened. <laughs> okay. and, and I gave him a reward because I lost the tooth. Well, you're a good daddy, Brian. Okay, let's stop talking now, because we're going to wake everybody up. Okay, so say goodbye. Good night. Go to sleep, YouTube. You're up late. What's that? It's a dollar. Where'd you get that at? From the tooth fairy. <gasps> Can I see the tooth that fell out? Let me see. Smile. You're missing a big tooth, huh? Ouch. So the tooth fairy left you a dollar? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to play my purse. Cool. Jay and Brian came to... Uh, my agency a few years ago and said they wanted to adapt a child and I immediately fell in love with Jay and Brian. They, <laughs> I just thought they were great. I saw him and he seemed so small and I saw her and she was just so cute. <laughs> yeah, she just turned 12 months. <laughs> yeah, she's a little tiny baby. He had this funky little bowl haircut at the time and it was right then, instant connection. I needed someone to cover me better 
I needed someone to love me the best Cause I'm learning the things that they can't teach in classes And I'm reading the poetry of love on a face I might not have a home like the kids in my yoga class But I'm balanced and poised in a really good Play. Right away, I, I I liked them almost instantly and thought they're gonna be a, be great dads. I lost a tooth, but I got back a dollar. I'm saving up for a toy and a car. Then one day I'll be raising my own kids, and when you think about it, it really isn't that far. It's a pretty big world with a lot of conditions, but I'm a pretty good kid with my heart on a wing. And we're flying so far over everyone's houses, anybody's free to join us, it's a family thing. Thank God California allows gay and lesbians to adopt, which is not true in some other states. And, you know, that's a real travesty because there are so many foster children out there. There are thousands and thousands of kids who need homes. And there are perfectly wonderful people out there who would be willing to be foster parents and adopt, and they're not allowed to in other states. We sat down in this room, and they brought binders upon binders upon binders of kids. And here we are thinking, oh, who, it might be a year before they find a match for us. And it was just like, pick. It's, it's just a, such a disservice to the kids because you look at Jay and Brian and Selena and Daniel, you, this is like the most loving family. These kids have blossomed. I've watched them over the years. When people are debating whether gay people should adopt or not, they think it's between having either a mom and a dad or two dads or two moms for kids. It's not. It's between having a dad and a dad or no mom or no dad at all. I mean, I just believe so strongly that every person has the capacity to be a good parent and children, these ch foster children need homes. And why would they think that because of someone's sexual orientation, they couldn't be a good loving parent? Because kids need love, they need a home, they need to know this is their forever home, that's what they call it. And they want, to, they want that. And I think um, Daniel, I see him being much more self-confident and just so much happier. And he, Daniel will be crying. He'd be crying because we were having to leave them. Mm -hmm. And poor Daniel was so unhappy. Because I knew what that yeah. felt like first thing, you know. Because my, when my parents divorced, they'd shuttle us back and forth for holidays and my dad would drop us off and me and my brother would cry until we didn't have the ability left to cry. And so I know what Daniel felt like, you know. And that's a tough place for a kid to be in and it stays with you for the rest of your life because Daniel was, they considered unadoptable. So, and here's a kid who these people would say, oh, don't let the gays adopt him, but he's a great kid. Mm -hmm. And they considered him unadoptable. So he's sitting at four or five years old, he had a little brother with him for a year, and then it, somebody adopted the little brother away. And then Selena was born, and she was placed with him for a year. And if no one would have adopted Selena before a certain time frame, there was families waiting to take her. He has a syndrome called Golden Heart, which is, um, they, they don't really know for sure why it exists, but they theorize it's, it's a chemical exposure in the womb, and it causes half of the body to develop at a slower rate than the other half of the body. And from the time that Daniel's been an infant, he's been no stranger to surgery in the operating room. And people teasing him and talking about it and making issues of it. Mm -hmm. I think in a perfect world, it would be nice if their biological mother and father were raising them if they weren't addicted to drugs, if they didn't have the problems that they had, if they were there raising their own biological kids and loving them, that would be the perfect scenario. That's not the world we live in. You know, and I get so frustrated when people say that because it's just, it's just there's so many other little girls and little boys sitting in homes waiting for that mommy and daddy to come along and adopt them and they don't. You started with? Right? Yep. Morning, you two. Um, we've got kind of a busy day ahead of us. We are uh, getting ready to go to church and then we're gonna go bowling so we're hooking up with some friends and, and going bowling. But this morning I woke up and I went and checked my YouTube mail, like I do every morning, and somebody sent me a video of some penguins in Germany. 
Meet Zet and Fielpunkt, who are fast becoming the world's most high-profile gay penguin couple. And now they're welcoming a new addition to their brood after fostering a chick. The biological parents just rolled the egg out of their nest. They kicked it out again and again. The keepers rolled it back, but it didn't work. Then we made the decision not to give the chick up and instead to try to give it to two fathers. And it worked. You know, it reminded me of a book that I read with my daughter all the time. And that book is called And Tango Makes Three. And this is a book that I've been reading to Selena since she was a little baby. And I thought we'd read it. No baby chick to feed and cuddle and love. Their nest was nice, but it was a little empty. It's kind of like me and Daddy Brian, huh? Our nest was real empty. As families get the backpacks, books, and new shoes ready, we've got some back-to-school tools that'll help you identify and push back against the gay agenda in the classroom. This is the Citizen Link Report. Hi, I'm Stuart Shepard, along with Candy Cushman, our education analyst. Hi, Candy. Hi, Stuart. Good to be with you today. <laughs> it's good to have you here. If there's one characteristic trait of the gay agenda in the public school system, it's this. It's sneaky. It's usually designed to look like something else. It's disguised as something else to make it hard for parents to realize what's going on. What can parents look for? How could you help them identify uh, what's going on in the classroom? What do they see? Well, what you say is so true. Gay activists realize that most parents in this nation do not want this kind of teaching coming in at taxpayer expense in their public schools. So homosexual activists have become very adept at getting subtle, at sneaking in these homosexuality lessons into things with innocent sounding titles, using uh, fun, engaging images and cute little pictures of furry animals to capture children's imagination and familiarize them with the whole idea of same-sex parenting and gay marriage. And some titles to look for, our Antango Makes Three, about two male penguins who supposedly fall in love with each other and uh, hatch a chick. The idea that they want to force this on children and parents and not even allow parents to opt their children out proves there's an agenda and they want to force this down these young kids' throats. I know many homosexuals who are my friends. Let's distinguish between them and the radical gay agenda. The gay agenda, the homosexual agenda that we hear so much about. This is Michael Savage. I want to go back to the gay marriage issue per se. I believe that a small group of radicals within the, the, the homosexual community have used the homosexual community to advance a Marxist agenda. Karl Marx, the communist, said that the family is an institution of slavery. It's an institution of ownership of a wife and children. And that is often used in, in uh, communist circles, by the way. You go all the way forward to the gay movement that we're living with today. It's a continuation of that very same concept of to destroy the institution of bourgeois marriage, in my opinion. And I want you to take it to heart and understand what's behind all of this push for gay marriage. It has almost nothing to do with rights for homosexuals to marriage. It has everything to do with the destruction of the bourgeois family. It is emanating from and it is being pushed by the Marxist movement itself. Well, we just received our numbers from overseas. Combined with our efforts here, everything is proceeding precisely according to plan. Gay bars are up. Straight men are experimenting. The priesthood is still our number one point. We got a leak. What? Got no choice. We're going to have to shut down this entire worldwide multi-billion dollar gay conspiracy. Oh. Damn it! The gay community doesn't pop out of a big pod somewhere, like a big field where all the gay people come out of. You know, we come from every different society. And with horror, I started to see the top secret gay agenda. How it affects churches, schools, and society. They always talk about the gay agenda. Me and Brian, we always joke, we never have gotten our copy of that. Our leadership agenda is don't kill us, mm -hmm. don't fire us, let us marry the people we love. I mean, what an agenda. Yeah. I mean, human rights. I mean, don't yes. kill us. And if you do kill us, we want you to be persecuted for it. You know, don't, you know, take away fire me from my job. Prosecuted. Prosecuted, sorry. Prosecuted, prosecuted. Big, big difference. Um, you know, I mean, come on. And I want to marry my partner and take care of him. What an agenda. It just seems like a really, and people rally behind that. 
Oh, they want to get married. Oh, they want job protection. They want to teach our kids so that yeah. they'll have more homosexuals. Oh, guess yeah, which what? Is the Those homosexuals thing. are being born into your families every day. And it's also important. I think it, it, teachers send a lot of things home in the backpack, mm -hmm. and it, it, some parents go through mm -hmm. them, some do not. Right. But it's important to read what's in there and kind of look for language that might be suggestive. Often, bullying mm -hmm. is one of the ways that it's disguised. It talks, it talks about a safe schools week or, right. a, or a bullying seminar. <laughs> Remember the good old days when it was Homer Simpson who taught parents how to talk to their kids about bullying? Let me help you dry those tears. Somewhere along the line, it looks like parents dumped that job on the schools. A vocal group of gay couples is pushing lesson number nine, a so-called anti-bullying lesson plan that will teach kids in kindergarten through fifth grade about LGBT or lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender lifestyles. What we do know is out of the 140,000 schools in this country, from kindergarten through college, the FBI documented 135 bias incidents based on sexual orientation in 2007. But none of these 135 incidents are specific to grades K through 5. And Fox News reporting did not find any data evidencing bias incidents based on sexual orientation at the elementary school level. Well, we've talked a lot on this program about the problem of bullying in schools. We've covered the deaths of a number of kids who've actually taken their own lives after being relentlessly bullied. You may remember Carl Joseph Walker Hoover. He's there on the left. He was in the sixth grade. Students taunted him, saying he acted gay. He hanged himself. He was just 11 years old. Jaheem Herrera, also age 11, same kind of taunts. He also hanged himself. So did Ryan Halligan, bullied, taunted by the girls, called a loser. Eric Mohat bullied again and again until one day he took a gun from his father's dresser drawer and turned it on himself. You know, Dan, over the years we've, we've seen so many tragedies with, with young gay uh, teenagers or even uh, some preteens uh, killing themselves because they couldn't deal with the criticism. And of course, this extraordinarily high profile event that happened not too long ago where the Rutgers team uh, jumped off of the, the George Washington Bridge. Just last night, if you're watching the program, I talked to the parents of this little boy, 13-year-old Asher Brown. He was, lived in Texas. He shot himself to death one week ago. His stepdad found his little body in the bottom, bottom of a closet. His parents say Asher was constantly bullied by four other kids because he was small and because he was gay. When you have that kind of desperation, you talk about an alone feeling. Imagine what this young man's last 24 hours of life had to be like. And then the moments he spent on that bridge at the end thinking, you know, there, there's, no, there's no other way, there's nowhere to turn. Now, Carl Palladino, he made some very vile anti-gay statements. Um, I just think my children, this is his quote, and your children would be better off and much more successful getting married and raising a family. Hello, that's what you want to do. <laughs> and I don't want them brainwashed into thinking that homosexuality is an equally valid and successful option. It isn't. Do you think that that kind of rhetoric, um, you know, uh, causes or is is, it, uh, is there a cause and effect between this type of rhetoric and gay bashing that's going on lately? Absolutely. You do? I, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I feel that uh, people like Carl Palladino and I feel like all of the ads that have been launched to fight against legalizing same-sex marriage in different, you know, people hear that. And, mm -hmm. and when you send a, a message, you know, that there are two different categories of people and one is fully vested and has fully legal rights and the other is not quite human, you, it, 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 it sets those people up as a target. What about for the 13-year-old kid right. who feels that gay, being gay is, be, he's, he hears over and over again, being gay is so terrible and, like Palladino says, dysfunctional, he doesn't think he's worthy to live, and he goes and, he goes and kills himself. He goes and jumps off that the bridge. That happens more than people even want to admit. Absolutely.
I was engaged to get married, a baby on the way. And, uh, you know, my father's completely homophobic. My mother had just had a nervous breakdown because my father and her were having problems. Um, you know, and I just, you know, all my friends thought I was straight and I was struggling with the whole gay thing. You know, and that was like an ongoing cycle of my life, you know, daydreaming about my best friend getting married to this girl who was pregnant. And it was just all these moral struggles that I was dealing with at that age. And then I, you know, I basically come from a, a relatively poor family. So I signed up to join the military because I felt like it was a way that I could do what I needed to do. You know, become straight by being in the military, uh, providing for this unborn baby and this girl who I really didn't love. I mean, she was a good friend, but, you know, I mean, I liked her. But I knew that, you know, I wasn't in love with her. It was just doing what I was supposed to be doing. So uh, I had a little bit of drinking, drove out to Wooler Bridge and, and pretty much threw myself off of it. You know, and then, you know, it was raining in one of the major storms here in the Bay Area and the, the, the river was swollen. And I remember going under the water. I remember seeing like the rain hitting the top of the water and everything being very quiet and serene. And I remember feeling really good about that like being under the water and just realizing it's, this is gonna be gone, this is it. You know, and then waking up the next morning, pain, full of my water in my lungs, just in pain and, you know, miserable. I woke up the next morning on the side of the river here, muddy and wet, but still alive. You know, and from that... Stop, don't stop, stop, don't stop, don't stop. Come on, don't stop. So I woke up the next day on the side of the river, and it was still raining. And I remember walking back to my car, being so angry at myself that I couldn't even do that right, that I couldn't even kill myself. You know, and, and I just wanted the pain to end. I wanted it to be in my life. You know, I, I knew that if I'd come out to my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, and my friends, and my girlfriend, that they wouldn't be looking at me the same. You know, I knew that God couldn't love me for who I was, because if anybody felt as ugly and as unloved as I did, there wasn't a place on this planet for me. So I, I needed to make this video, not only for me, but for every other young person that's out there that thinks that suicide is the right answer. It's the, it's the worst answer you could ever do. Suicide is not your answer. You know, if you can get past that pain, if you can get past those feelings and you can move forward, there's so much better in life ahead of you. It's just, it's a, I don't know. It almost is one of those times in life where you, you feel like it's almost like a, a dream. Mm -hmm. It's so far away, and but it feels so clear, but yeah, it's like you would never do that. You know, I look back at it now and I go, wow, I did that. You know, and I could never imagine doing that again. Dear God, thank you for this meal that you set before us and thank you for every day that you give to us as a family. Thank you for all the blessings that we have in life. Please take care of everyone out there in this world who needs your love and your strength and your grace today. And may your spirit go with each one of us in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you and amen. amen. This is what I wanted. You know, I kind of feel like God's giving me a good life today for what I didn't have as a kid. Marriage equality is important to me because my love, my marriage, and my family is no different than anyone else's. And people don't have to agree with me on that or accept homosexuality or, or any of that. But it is important that we are all treated equally under the law. Marriage equality seems to me like the most basic fundamental right for any human being. You know, that you can't marry the person that you love and you're willing to spend your whole life you know, with and take care of. What's that telling people? But there are still people out there in the world who are with people they've been with for years and, and they don't feel the need to get married. And yeah. I think in, in fighting for marriage sometimes you come off as being really arrogant like you think everybody should have to have that kind of life. And that's not the point of, of what this is all about. It's not all gay people should get married. It's you, you should be to. able to yeah. if you want to and not have it be an issue. You know, the people who are fighting for marriage equality are, are also fighting for your right not to get married. But I also, I don't, I'm not sure that I would fight so hard for it if I didn't know what it meant. You know what I mean? If I had never met Brian and I didn't have this relationship and have this family, I don't know that I would be so, you know, I guess I can understand where they're coming from because I don't know that I would fight so hard for that. 
So I think now that, you know, I know how I felt on our wedding day. I know how I felt when we married. You know, and I understand that there's young people that are in love and they want that. When there's, you know, civil unions, you know, and not marriage, you're less than. You think of yourself as less than. So I think it's important that, that people know that they're not less than. You know, and young people need to know that they're not less than. Thing that really inspires me about the videos is when we have young people write us and say thank you and thank you I mean it really moves me it really it makes me go you know what we're doing this we're doing what's right because we have our doubts you know when we make these videos and you know we start having our doubts you know why are we doing this are we doing it for the, the cause of doing making it equality for people or are we doing it for us and then we question ourselves and I think when we stop doing it for the right reasons we'll just stop doing it because we keep going back for when should we stop? And every time we think we're gonna stop, we get another letter mm -hmm. from some young kid that says, thank you for showing me that I can have a family, you know, I can get married and have kids and you know, I don't have to live what I thought, the life I thought I had to live. I really believe what's gonna change people's hearts, what's gonna change people's minds is not necessarily studies like my own, is not any of this intellectual garble and debate but really knowing people, really seeing that this person's just like me, flesh and blood, longing for love, longing for companionship. When someone's child comes out, when someone's family member, that's when hearts begin to change. That's when people realize there's nothing to fear. I mean, it's very simple. You know, love is love. It sometimes makes us uncomfortable. It pushes us beyond our boundaries. But when you boil it down and you strip away, <sighs> wow. I guess I'm trying to make it more complicated than it is. It really is. It's just human beings loving each other. It really doesn't have to be anything more complicated than that. And it's not so scary. I think I chose well. <laughs> so. He's challenged me in a lot of ways, and I've grown in a lot of ways that I wouldn't have grown otherwise. So, I mean, just doing what we're doing here, I wouldn't have considered. It would have been a no. I never would have reached out to do any kind of activism for anything. So he's, he's made me a different person. Rather, I've become a different person by being with him. When people talk about marriage, it's like, Brian's my world, you know? And I thought, you know, people don't understand that. And he has given me all my purpose in life, you know? I hope everybody finds that in somebody because I never thought until I met Brian that I would ever have that. And I will never let go of that. To. I wrote everything that I had to say down, and this is my love letter to everyone who's coming out. You don't know me, but I know you. I may not know your name or where you live, but I know you, and that's because I've been you. You might be staring at the stars over your home and wondering why God made you this way. You hear the pastor on Sunday talk about how homosexuals are sinners who have turned their back on God and instead chosen a life of sexual perversion that they have no place in heaven. And you silently die inside as you ask yourself, is that me? It can't be me. It's impossible. I won't let it be me. Mom and dad, I love you, but I can never tell you about this because I know you will not understand how hard I fought it, how hard I wish to be different, and how it never changed. You aren't too important to me to lose, so I will continue hiding it. We remember what it was like to see others fall in love, holding hands, kissing in the hallways at school, seeing pictures of the power couples in the yearbook and wondering, when will it be my turn? Who can I love that will love me back like that? So you date someone of the opposite sex because that's what you're supposed to do. 
and you hide the truth from your family, from your friends, and sometimes from yourself. Perhaps you're lucky enough to admit to yourself that you are gay, though I know taking that great leap does not mean that you can share that with anybody. Maybe you can tell a friend or one of your parents, but that does not take away from the soul-scorching loneliness you live with every day at school and elsewhere, as you live with the knowledge that telling others about yourself could mean total rejection and possibly violence, that no place will be safe for you. We made the plans, found the pills, made a few cuts, wrote the notes, and stood on the edge of countless bridges, knowing to the core of our souls that dying was the only way out. It was not. Without surviving those dark times, we would not know what we do today. We would not know what our love looks like as she's sleeping. We would not know we would one day be a husband to someone we could not imagine life without. We would not know how much that one kiss can be like taking our first breath. We would not know how the sun could shine in our daughter's and son's eyes. We would not know how much these people would need us and us them how beautiful the world can look when we are not in pain, and how many adventures we are gonna have because the road seems so long getting to those times. But all you have to do to get there is show up. I won't kid you, life holds lots of amazing moments for you, but it will also kick you in the teeth too. It won't be easy, and some days may be a fight. You'll fight through that feeling of being alone against the world many more times, and the world knows how to make you hurt. But in the end, for all the scars and all the lines of care you will get on your face and each gray hair, you will have so many moments and memories that you will treasure. And for myself, as much pain as I have experienced and as much as I had at times wished that I was someone else or that I could go back in time and change things, I don't wish those things anymore. I know that without them, I could not be here. And here's a pretty good place to be. I realize now that all the stuff I've gone through has brought me to them, and I will not trade that for anything. All I had to do was show up, keep getting out of bed every day, keep being just who I was. Life took care of the rest. From all of us who have been there and me, see you later, YouTube.